We celebrate today the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the feast which follows the day of the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus, which was yesterday. Both devotions, my dear brothers and sisters, are closely linked. The main difference between the devotions of the two hearts of Jesus and Mary is that the sacred heart of Jesus emphasizes Jesus' divine heart as being full of love for humankind, while devotion to Mary's immaculate heart is essentially concerned with the love that her heart has for Jesus, our God and Savior. Mary's heart is meant to be a model for the way we should love God. She's the only human person who is able to fully and really love God in the way that he should be loved. Since her heart immaculate means sinless, spotless. It is because if Mary did not respond generously with a loving yes to God's proposal of being the mother of his son, then would not have had a savior, would not have been saved. For us, our daily mantra should also, Thy will be done. The Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is a feast of faith. We begin to see the faith in the life of Mary when she believed in the words of the angel. St. Augustine tells us that the Blessed Mother conceived Jesus first in faith, then in her body. She had faith that God would fulfill the word spoken through his messenger. It was this faith that sustained Mary in the many ordeals of her life. And what we notice is that the faith of Mary was not just a triumph, something that she just walked in this journey on this road without difficulties or challenges. Mary also experienced the obscurity of faith. From her first fear in Nazareth when she said, Thy will be done, to a final fear beneath the cross at Golgotha when she saw her son dying and when Jesus was saying, Mother, behold your son, son, behold your mother. In the Gospel of Luke, we have that story where they presented Jesus to the temple. And the old man Simeon prophesied that his son was to be a sign of contradiction and that a sword would one day pierce her heart. It was more or less like a second annunciation. Mary experienced the truth of Simeon's words during the annual Passover pilgrimage to Jerusalem. The gospel which we read today Having allowed Jesus to wander freely among other pilgrims, Mary and Joseph discovered after a day that their son was lost. But rather than an apology, they received the gentle reprimand that Jesus had to be about his father's business. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this word of sorrow would cut deeper with the passing of time. Even in the hidden life of Nazareth, we see there is more or less like a veil in the life of Mary which is being opened. A woman of sorrow, seeing a son crucified, seeing a son suffering. And yet, she emerges from this obscurity of faith, strengthened. She remained at the foot of the cross because she was strengthened. Hence, her heart, we call it immaculate. Because it is from this faith that she stands. It is from this faith that the doors of her life are opened. The doors of us Christians are also opened. We pray today for such faith. We also pray that we may be able to offer our lives to God. Our lives too are marked frequently by the obscurity of faith. Sometimes on a personal level, some of us are afflicted by bodily sufferings or difficult relationships. On a national and global level, we face all these unprecedented 
difficult challenges in the world, especially during these days of the COVID-19. Only faith in God who ultimately triumphs can give birth to a hope that sustains us through all darkness, allowing love of God and even whatever presents itself to us as an enemy to enter as light into the world. We pray for such love, the love that Mary had. We also pray for our own hearts, our own dispositions, that we may believe like Mary and allow God's will to be done in our lives. I want to finish off by some words of St. Bernard of Clairvaux, who says that, You have heard, O virgin, that you conceive and bear a son, you have heard that it would not be by men, but by the Holy Spirit. The angel awaits an answer. We too are waiting. On your word depends comfort for the wretched, ransom for the captive, freedom for the condemned, indeed salvation for all the sons of Adam, the whole of your race. Answer quickly, O virgin. Speak your own word. Conceive the divine word. Open your heart to faith, O blessed virgin, your lips to praise, your womb to the creator. See the desired of all nations is at your door, knocking to end. Arise, hasten, open. Arise in faith, hasten in devotion, open in praise and thanksgiving. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, she says, be done to me according to your word, through Christ our Lord.